Hey guys, Joe here, welcome to my channel and welcome to ReactorCon 2020. So, lots of plan today, um, at least for today anyway. Um, ReactorCon, great to see so many people from the community here and it's great to see so many other channels that are joining this amazing opportunity to show people what we have and for everyone to just enjoy each other's content. So, I'm starting today with Alien. I am absolutely massive fan of the Alien movies. The first Alien is my favourite horror film of all time and Aliens is my favourite sci-fi film of all time. So I've been a massive fan of the Alien franchise even from when I was younger up until the age I am now which is, you know, old enough. Um, and yeah, I'm just a massive fan of the Alien franchise as a whole and that includes Prometheus. I thought today, well, I as much as I've seen, you know, the first Alien, Aliens, Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, which I would agree with most of the community that the fourth film isn't as good as the rest and the third film, you know, could be improved quite a lot mainly because of the use of CGI which wasn't as good as you would expect by today's standards, it hasn't aged as well, but the assembly cut is a good version of Alien 3. I do actually like Alien 3 and I have a soft spot for Prometheus. A lot of people might give Prometheus some criticism but Ridley Scott's vision I think is absolutely fantastic and it was really suspenseful and it gave the eerie sense back to survival horror almost and there's a lot of tension in there and it's just very well made. I just wish some of the deleted scenes might have made it into the actual film and some of the acting was a little bit iffy, a bit more character development could have been done but visually and the sound and just cinematography of that film and I really liked the subject matter of that film. Alien Covenant, you know, I liked it for what it was but I wish Ridley Scott had continued with his vision. However, I'm really looking forward to Alien Awakening which will be the new one which will connect to the original Alien film. So I am looking forward to that. I hope it does go ahead. Um, we've got tough times at the moment with coronavirus so hopefully things will get up and running and I hope Ridley Scott is on board with the directing for that one. Um, so yeah I'm a massive fan of the Alien films but I never got to watch the 40th anniversary short films and I thought well today might be a good idea you know while I'm here to start this off to start my ReactorCon debut off so I think we should just watch all six films and they are short films they're all roughly about 10 minutes long each so I am going to do individual films so I'm going to have about 15 every 15 minutes we'll play a film and a bit, little bit of a review after that and after the last film I'll, I'll compare all of them and tell you what my favorite bits about each of them are and which is my favorite overall so um, the names of the films themselves are really intriguing. They're all basically one word, one of them's two word, but um, Harvest is the first film. We've got Alone, we have Awe, we have Night Shift, Specimen and Containment. All of those titles give a sense of entrapment, a sense of a lack of space, claustrophobia, and they're all suspenseful titles as well. You know, Harvest, you know, they're obviously harvesting from the moon, similar to Awe. Um, you know, harvesting rock from LV-426. That's what I'm guessing the plot is for that one. Um, alone, obviously when you're alone and it's claustrophobic. Night shift, you're probably alone at night on the night shift on the ship. Specimen. Containment, you know, try and contain um, the alien and the, the virus, the parasite to stop it from escaping. They're all very suspenseful titles and I like that. You know, they, they all really delve down into the original film and the, what made the original film so great which was the atmosphere the tense atmosphere and suspense and the lack of CGI and lots of practical effects and I always appreciate practical effects over CGI any day in a film particularly in a horror film um, and also practical effects and clever camera work and visuals and cinematography over gore as well although gore is good as well gore is always good in a horror film it's just you have to use it well. So let's just get straight into the first film, the first short film, which is just under 10 minutes long, called Harvest. Let's go. Definitely going back to the roots of Alien. Nicely shot as well. Music amazing sound and music are some of the most important things in a horror film 
and this is no exception in this type of claustrophobic clusterfuck that's about to happen I'm sure wow it does look good and it's CGI but it's very well done Wow, so there's already a danger on this ship. Yeah, and they've got the sensor to sense the xenomorph coming towards them. Ooh, and she is infected. She has a baby inside her. Collision imminent. T minus seven minutes. You're reading it wrong. You're reading it wrong. God damn it! I'm comparing it to the other alien films. God damn it, Sigourney Weaver from Aliens. You're reading it wrong, which was suggested in the first alien film. With the music and the really close camera work in this confined environment, it really gives a lot of tension and a lot of suspense to the scene. With a lot of facial acting and minimal dialogue as well. Here we go. The slow turn, see it out the corner of your eye, too scared to react. All staples in horror films, particularly in Alien. Ooh. Those are some good effects though. She knows she's got it inside her, I think. She might as well sacrifice herself. Because she's gonna die. There's nothing to save her. Are you sure the company has probes this far out? They're locked on door to start speaking. This is just proof as well that lower budget films like Alien was originally, they're so effective, they're just so effective because of the minimal camera use and the minimal sets and you can do everything with sound and facial expressions and lighting alone. Ceiling or the floor? Step out the way. Ooh! <laughs> you got me. Great job, Sky. Final warning. The last emergency shuttles will be 
I'm gonna have to leave him. Oh, well, good on you. Oh, his violins. Amazing. Oh, okay. Collision imminent. All personnel not aboard emergency shuttles. Brace for impact. Only two. Still got time. Leave the one that's got it in her chest. But I think we know that that's not going to happen. What are you doing? The company probe will pick you up in 22 hours. Bad choice. But they're obviously not to know. They don't know. Holy shit. What's happening here? Why was she smiling like that? Oh, okay. That's why she's not scared. She's an android. Oh shit. Now whoever picks up that beacon is going to get a face full of face huggers. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was really good. Good job, Benjamin Houdshell. And Craig Dewey for the writing. Um, very, very simplistic. And it worked very well, much like the original Alien film. And just the camera work alone, along with the, the lighting and the sound and the music, it just added to that suspense and that, you know, that feeling of being trapped and not being able to escape and going around in circles and something's about to come at you but you don't know where and how it's going to happen yeah it was a really interesting one and the camera work was just so expertly put together you know lots of cuts so they obviously didn't show too much um it could be a budgetary thing as well but it usually works in a film to actually portray something much more realistic but those cuts those cutting um, with the lighting and the flashing going off with the cuts and that really tense drone-like music that was sort of <laughs> penetrating your soul effectively um, all of that together uh, along with the sweat and the, the panic and the breathing it just adds and adds and adds to that feeling of dread that something bad is happening and is about to happen and it was really effective and did obviously and did really remind me of the original alien film in a good positive way and it looked as though it was practical effects. The, the alien was really, really well made. But again, they could have had some of the props from the original film. I mean, it is 20th Century Fox that produced this, so that would make sense. Um, and yeah, obviously, it's, you know, it's a minimal set that is just based around a couple of corridors. A um, couple of things I wouldn't have done is, okay, that alien's just killed one of our shipmates do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to run back and get the scanner i would have just gone said everyone let's go straight for the door over there that probably would have killed me though but you know that's just that would just be my reaction i wouldn't go back to try and get a scanner because that's the least of your worries at that moment i understand obviously it, 
it senses the xenomorph coming, so it is a very useful piece of equipment to have. Um, the woman that was feeling the pain in the chest, I thought she might have went back because she knew that she was she had an alien inside of her. But in the end, she was screaming when the egg was opening, almost as though she had no clue. So I don't know. Um, and the and that woman being the android at the end now I understand why she wasn't showing the emotion that makes sense it wasn't just her being really confident we're gonna make this I'm not scared at all she couldn't be scared because she's an android um, and obviously it ends with the the escape pods having the alien organisms on board with the actual survivors as well so we know what's going to happen when someone goes to pick them up it's just going to start a new spread of these xenomorph creatures and face huggers impregnating people but yeah um, it really worked really well the design of the ship that was CGI from what I can tell um, and it worked really well it was, it was well made and some some money went into that as well um, but yeah just the cinematography the camera work the the actors were amazing for the minimal dialogue they had um, with their body language and their facial expressions. It was a great, a great alien short film, and it easily something that could be could have been in the original. And it was a great attempt. And yeah, so far it's my favourite, which is not surprisingly, it's the only film I've watched so far of these short films. But let's see if that trend keeps on going. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and join me for the next short film called Alone.